Hey everyone, welcome back. Mark Igo here with your MassHighSchoolHockey.com weekly recap. Uh, we head into the MIA tournament here, uh, starting uh, last night up in Stoneham and uh, finishing up at the Boston Garden on uh, Sunday, March 17th. So be sure to put that on your calendars for a full day of great hockey over at the Boston Garden on March 17th. We'll have all the championship games uh, there for you. We'll start taking a look at the um, previews today uh, as we get ready. As I said last night up in Stoneham, we had our play-in games where Hingham and Archbishop Williams were sent back to the D1 South uh, brackets and Malden Catholic and Catholic Central were able to advance into the Super 8 where uh, they will now have their matchups beginning on Sunday, which will be up at Songus Arena in Lowell on Sunday. So. How well, the seeds shape up now in Division 1A, the Super 8 is number one St. John's Prep will now match up against number eight Central Catholic, while number two the Springfield Cathedral team coming in at 16-1-4 having lost their last game of the year to Malden Catholic will now face Malden Catholic who is our number seven seed. In a uh, clash of local rivals uh, we will see BC High facing off against Catholic Memorial so certainly two very strong teams in Division 1A play. Uh, meeting up. This is a best of three this year, so it's a little bit different a format. So it's a best of three series. So again, you've got BC High facing off against Catholic Memorial on that best of three, and then rounding it out are our number four and number five seeds where Austin Prep will face Reading. Uh, Reading, the only public school in the tournament in the Super 8 now that Hingham got eliminated last night. Reading coming in, the Rockets at 16 1 and 5, so we'll see how. Uh, they can do there as they face off against Austin Prep. All those games again will take place. The first games of the best of three series will take place on Sunday up at Songus Arena. Those games will start off at 12 o'clock. As I said, Archbishop Williams and Hingham both losing in the play-in games, so the one south bracket is now full of 15 teams, but uh, certainly very, very strong bracket this year down in Division I South. Your final seedings there, at least your top five teams, are Archbishop Williams at number one, Hingham slots in at number two. Braintree, uh, who was uh, spearheading that conference, is now at number three at 17-4 and one. Duxbury comes in at number four and Marshfield number five. Barnstable number six. Go right down the line. These are all teams that were actually in contention for 1A um, spots. So again, very, very strong bracket there uh, down, in, down south. A lot of those games will take place um, first round towards the end of this week. Those games most likely will be played down and born at Gallo Arena, so uh, be sure to go down and visit our friend John Hickey down at Gallo to catch a lot of that one south action. That should be an incredible bracket. Uh, be interested to see how that one shakes out. Of course, we'll bring you updates uh, again right back here next week uh, with uh, the highlights of some of those games. Okay, a lot of people sitting at home last night wondering if the Division I North bracket was going to be shaken up, uh, whether or not Malden Catholic or Central Catholic would be sent back uh, to the Division I North bracket. That did not take place as Chelmsford is able to hold on to the number one spot there heading into uh, tournament play. So uh, Chelmsford is number one, Winchester coming in at number two, Arlington at number three, Woburn at number four, and Burlington at number five. So again, a very strong bracket there. 10 total teams um, squaring off. Uh, the first play-in game is going to take place on the 27th, uh, first round action there, where Wakefield will face off against Andover. And then over on the other side of the bracket, also on the 27th, will be Arlington against Melrose. So that would be the would-be play-in games for Division I North men. So again, very strong uh, tournament going on up there. So be sure to catch some of those games. Most of those will take place at Stoneham and Chelmsford Arena, um, Chelmsford Forum. So again, uh, keep an eye on MassHighSchoolHockey.com. Just click right on the Tournaments tab. That'll bring you to all of the brackets. All of the updated uh, start times and locations will be posted up there as we get them. Um, so again, keep that as a live link. Um, and certainly visit our Twitter page. Again, hashtag MassHSHockey on Twitter. Uh, so that you can get all of our updates as we uh, begin to tweet those out. Okay, moving over to Women's Division I, uh, taking a look at the girls preview there. No surprise here at the top as Woburn has led the way uh, the entire season. They're still undefeated, coming in at 17-0-3. So they're the number one seed in the Women's Division I. Coming in at number two is Beverly Danvers. Number three is Westford Academy. Number four is St. Mary's Lynn, who's no stranger to uh, the MIA tournament, nor a stranger to the Boston Garden. So we'll see if they can put a little run together here. And then uh, the number five seed going to uh, 
Mass Goneman uh, coming in at 14, four and two. So kind of a new arrival there, at our top five seats in the women's bracket. Uh, those get underway as well uh, tonight. So again, uh, 26 teams in the women's uh, division one seating. So a lot of action to bring you there. So be sure to uh, click on that uh, tournament link uh, to get all of the updates and all of the uh, final scores and uh, updates on the rankings there and uh, the seats. Okay, let's stay with the ladies here as we look at the Division II preview. Um, again, Duxbury leading the way the entire season, coming in at number one at 18-1-2. Their only loss of the season uh, came against our number two seeded Falmouth team at 16-1-2. Number three is Wolseley, who just lost a heartbreaker the other night down at Falmouth in the championship down there that uh, Pat and I were, were down there for that one. That was an exciting game. Canton Bulldogs put on a big run at the end of the season there. They're coming in at 16-3-1, sitting at number four. And then Gardner, uh, St. Bernard's coming in at number five at 11, four and two. So you've got Duxbury, Falmouth, Wolseley, Canton, and Gardner at the top there. Again, 22 teams uh, filling out that bracket. Uh, so again, a lot of uh, D2 uh, women's teams making the tournament here. That tournament is underway. So again, you can check all of those bracket updates up on the homepage on the website by just clicking the tournaments button. Okay, moving over to Men's Division Two, Beverly coming in at 18-1-1 is leading the way there on the D2 North side of things. Beverly again 18-1-1, the number one seed. Lincoln Sudbury is the number two seed. Wilmington will be your number three seed. And Tewksbury, who was a state champion a few years back, is coming in at the number four seed at 14-3-1. So again, you've got Beverly, Lincoln Sudbury, Wilmington, and Tewksbury leading the way there in the Division Two North. That one will get underway towards the end of the week here. Um, so again, follow those brackets. You get 14 teams um, uh, vying for the state uh, title there in Division Two North. Okay, men's Division Two South. A lot of movement here as uh, we had a couple of changes uh, towards the end of the season. The Canton Bulldogs are going to lead the way here at 15-3 and two. Uh, they are also no stranger to the Boston Garden as they were there a couple of years ago. So Canton leading the way as the number one seed. Martha's Vineyard moving up to number two here. Uh, so they're our number two seed coming in at 15-4 and one. Sandwich is the number three seed at 14, four and two. Oliver Ames at 14, four and two, coming in at the four seed. And number five is Coyle and Cassidy, the number five seed. So again, you got Canton, Martha's Vineyard, Sandwich, Oliver Ames, and Coyle and Cassidy leading the way there as the top five seeds. That's a 15 team bracket um, there in men's division two south. Okay, Division Three North, uh, Lowell at the top here. We've been keeping an eye on them all year. They're coming in at 14, two and four. Number two is Marblehead, who has uh, been there before. Uh, they've, they've been a lot of tournament play over the past couple of years, so we'll keep an eye on them. Number three is Swampscott, coming in at 15-5-0. And, oh. and then Shaw Sheen at number four at 13-6-1. Lowell Catholic rounds out our top five as they come in at 11-6-4. Twelve teams over in that bracket. Very competitive bracket. I mean, even Latin Academy sitting at the bottom there could, uh, could make some noise there. So... Again, uh, follow that one, Division Three North, uh, to see who uh, would uh, face off against the Division Three South team um, to advance to the Garden. So that, that one's a little bit different where uh, North plays South and then they play West and Central uh, to get into uh, the Garden play. Men's D3 South, uh, another loaded bracket. 25 teams here uh, vying for an opportunity to play at the Garden uh, on March 17th. Uh, leading the way is Medfield. Again, we've kept an eye on Medfield all year. 18-1-1, one one, very strong season there for Medfield. Medway coming in at number two at 15-2-3, two right behind them. Abington grabs the number three spot at 15-3-2. Middleborough grabs the number four seed at 15-5-0. And, oh. and then Dighton Rehoboth uh, grabs the fifth seed at 14-4-2. So you've got Medfield, Medway, Abington, Middleborough, and Dighton Rehoboth leading the way there in that 25 team bracket a lot of quality teams throughout that bracket so again that should be a very competitive uh, very competitive tournament just looking down here see it's situated at number 20 uh, situate perennial powerhouse throughout uh, division three play um, uh, we'll look to try to uh, make some noise there at uh, number 20 seed so we'll see uh, how that one shakes out again a lot of those games will be played down at the gallo arena in Bourne uh, and throughout Brockton and some of the other arenas, so we'll keep you apprised of those game times and uh, and locations again right up on the website. Here, let's move out to the central and western part of the state now as we look at the Division Three and Three A Central previews here. 
uh, over in D3 Central, Groton Dunstable, again, we've been talking about them all season. They're the number one seed at 15-1-4. and four. Wachusett was chasing them all year. They're number two at 15-3-2. and two. Shrewsbury comes in at number three at 15-4-1. and one. And Marlboro at number four at 12-8-0. No. We've got a six-team bracket here with Auburn and Algonquin uh, rounding out the top six teams. So, again, uh, competitive play out there in Central. Groton Dunstable leading the way with, uh, we'll keep an eye on Wachusett and uh, Shrewsbury as well. Uh, a real, real strong top three there coming out of the Central. Over in the 3A Central, uh, we've got the Worcester-Leicester 16-2-2 two two team. Again, we've been keeping an eye on Worcester-Leicester all year, so no surprise there at 16-2-2, two two, grabbing the number one seed. Uh, Grafton comes in at number two at 15-4-1. Neshoba comes in at number three, and Northbridge at number four. Uh, that is a 17 bracket, so again, go up on the website for all your updates there of Division 3A Central. Uh, the winner of the Division 3A Central will go on to face the winner of the D Division 3A West. Speaking of the West, let's get over there and take a look at their previews here. Uh, the seedings for D3 West, only a five-team bracket there in the uh, Division 3 West with Westfield lead leading the way there. Again, no stranger to the garden there. Westfield, very strong team. Longmeadow right behind them at number two. East Longmeadow is number three. Ludlow number four and West Springfield rounds it out at number five. So again, we'll keep an eye on uh, Westfield and uh, and see how they do here with uh, Longmeadow nipping at their heels in the number two slot. 3A West is led by the Agawam Brownies. Um, again, no stranger here to our reports. Agawam has been a very strong team over the years. Chicopee coming in at number two. South Hadley Holyoke at number three. Waconia at uh, Wakona at number four. And then um, there's an 18 bracket there um, coming out of 3A West. So again, log on to the website to see uh, the updates there in regards to 3A West. And again, the 3A West champion will face off against a 3A Central champion. We'll give you more updates on that game as we get closer to the final there. But again, um, another strong bracket there out at 3A West. Okay, this week from a contest standpoint, uh, Warrior Hockey has stepped up and given us two Dynasty Hockey Sticks uh, to use as contest prizes o o during the tournament. So our first tournament uh, contest question is going to take a look at that uh, big rivalry uh, three-game playoff uh, between Boston College High School and Catholic Memorial uh, happening over in the Division 1A. Certainly those two teams have uh, won a lot of state championships, a lot of Super 8 championships. So what we're asking you there is to predict the winner of that three-game series. Uh, if, you predict the, if you correctly predict the winner of that series, you will be entered into a random drawing where you'll have an opportunity to win a dynasty stick. So that's going to be this week's contest. So again, log in right off of the home page. Uh, you must enter before the puck drops in that first game of the BCCM matchup, which will take place on Sunday. So again, make sure that you get your entry in prior to Sunday morning uh, for an opportunity to try to win one of these new Dynasty Warrior Sticks. Certainly a thank you out to Warrior uh, as well as they are uh, featured on our, our back cover of the MIA State High School Hockey Tournament program. Um, the programs will be out at the rink starting on Thursday night. Uh, we will have distribution beginning there. Uh, this is this year's front cover. It is a 70th anniversary collector's edition as we uh, look back on the history of high school hockey with uh, the first championship uh, being won by Medford in 1943. So that goes back a few years. You can find all of that information up on MassHighSchoolHockey.com as well under our history section. But uh, we uh, thank all of those folks that sent in some of the historical photos. Uh, we've got some great shots here on the front cover. Uh, we also have a full page uh, ad on the inside of the program uh, celebrating other tournament action and other uh, high school history um, throughout the state of Massachusetts. So certainly a great uh, program to have. Um, it's also available on the website. So if you miss an opportunity to purchase it at a rink, you can go right up onto the home page and click on the front cover um, and make a secure purchase through PayPal uh, to make sure that you get uh, your 2013 MIA State High School Hockey Program. Again, uh, this one being the 17th anniversary collector's edition. So you'll see that throughout the rinks starting on Thursday night, but again, available online as well. Okay, that's going to do it for this week's recap. As I said, plenty of great hockey coming up uh, starting tonight and throughout the rest of the weekend. So uh, Pat Sarrio and I will be out around the rinks. Look for Pat at the D1 games on Sunday. 
if you're looking to purchase any DVDs uh, from those games or even the previous games played uh, at the play-in games just last night. Uh, Pat will be at the arenas. You can get Pat through SurreoVideo.com. So again, just go to SurreoVideo.com and uh, you can get all of Pat's contact information up there. And uh, we will hope to be back to you here uh, next week uh, with recaps of uh, probably the first two rounds in some cases and certainly the first round of the 1A um, games as they, uh, they go off on Sunday. The next round will take place uh, next Wednesday and Thursday, so hopefully we'll be back with you prior to the start of those games. Again, don't forget it is a best of three series this year, so a little bit different. Um, feel free to send us uh, any uh, tweets or Facebook comments, uh, again, right up on our social media pages. You can access those off the home page, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you right back here next week.